Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you're new me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent. So the last place we left off, we were helping uh, Alyssa, Bunny Mom, around the house, doing some stuff for her. But apparently we're getting some company today, so I'm very interested to see who's coming over. But anyway, guys, let me entertain you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it. Warm chin, you're up. All right, off we go. <clears throat> All right. Not very often. Our visitor tomorrow is the only regular visitor I have. He usually comes this time every month with a shipment of supplies for me. Um, actually, man, this music is, like... Oh, okay, there we go. Alright, there we go. Will it be alright if I'm here? Should I... That would be necessary at all. In fact, I'd prefer you present when he arrives. There's something I need to discuss with you both. Uh, both of us? Yes, I'm afraid I haven't been completely honest with you, Cassian. The gulp catches in your throat, catching a... Coughing a... Coughing up as you're caught, up, caught by surprise. <coughs> what do you mean? The panic began to set into your gullet again. Don't be alarmed. Please understand, it's all been for your well-being. I'll explain it tonight at dinner, I promise. <clears throat> it takes a few minutes for her to finally coax you back from the brink of fear again. The atmosphere felt tense from then on as you resumed the rest of the remaining chores. An uneasiness fills your movements, no longer a pep in your step as you turn her words in your head. God, it's no use overthinking this either. I I'm here now. Better take it as it comes. Dinner, huh? It could be a long few hours. Huh. I wonder what's gonna go on. Dusk arrives. Dusk, excellent game. Dusk arrives just in time for you both to finish your respective chores. Alyssa had refused to meet your gaze since this afternoon. Even when you came in after her, she immediately sent you to wash up in the bathroom, saying she'd wash up out in the kitchen before starting dinner. Dinner itself was awkward and tense. Things didn't change much. You sat across from each other at the dining room table, and Alyssa's cooking was still as delicious as before, but the dour look on her face made everything feel even worse. Hmm. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> huh? Hmm. It's like fucking Minecraft characters. <laughs> Are you going to tell me now? I really wish I didn't have to. Alyssa, what have you been hiding from me? Was it from the start? Why you're here, I have given it some thought. I believe I know why you were brought here. Y you do? Then why haven't you told me yet? Because it would put you in danger. What do you mean? Alyssa averted her gaze. Hesitation overtook her for the first few times she wanted to speak up. Eventually, she looked to you with a resigned sigh. There is a prophecy that has been passed around in local folklore. Our land is in crisis. A terrible evil has been stretching across the continent and threatens to engulf us all. The prophecy has foretold of this darkness and has foretold a hero with strength from another world that would stop its spread. The evil king controlling that darkness had found you first and brought you here through foul magic. I've managed to intercept you before you were taken to his stronghold. You are not what I would call a hero, but by most generous descriptions. Many of our men, old and young, have given their lives to pursue this legend, hoping that such an otherworldly being was a metaphor, and that otherworldly strength was their own to achieve through heroism. And many have perished in pursuit of such a foolhardy legacy. As Alyssa fell silent, the room was filled with a heavy atmosphere. It took you a moment to even barely grasp a part of what she, of what she just told you. That's... That's absolutely crazy! P prophecies? Dark evils? Heroes? What? A a am I really not d dreaming? Oh my lord, this sounds like a, just a plot of a very bad isekai anime. Cassian, calm yourself, child. Her solemn command snapped you out of your stuttery mess, even if briefly. Uh, okay. You let out a massive sigh, taking your time to regather your thoughts again. I, none of this makes sense, but... The cloaked figure, the transformation, this world... Is this for real? Alyssa gave you a quizzical look as if she's realized something suddenly. That cloaked figure, and that darkness that swallowed you from that park. It was no doubt they are related. Had I told you the details of this sooner, your panic would only amplify. I waited for you to have calmed and acclimated to your new body before informing you. Wait, if you could interrupt whatever magic or whatever the kind of that king, evil king used, c couldn't you just send me back? I'm afraid I can't. The king has powerful magic at his, at his disposal. And while I may have disrupted his magic, I am no different than the average person. Average person? Everyone can use magic? Yes, to varying capacity. You press your head down against the table, feeling as if your world came crashing down again. First the craziness that was your transformation, and now prophecies and dark lords? 
Cassian, are you all right? He looked up again as she called. The concerned frown on her face made you feel bad. He, yeah, I, I'm okay, ma'am. Wait, but what does this have to do with your guest tomorrow? Again, Alyssa hesitated, averting her eyes at anything other than you. He is part of an academy. Are you, are you going to send me away? Cassian, your life would be in peril if you stay here. I, I will ask to... I will ask him to take we, take you with him back to the city, to keep you safe. I guess I don't really have a say in this. Is this the only way to stay alive? On top of the fact that I still don't know how to get back home? Um, I... Well, I don't really know about the prophecy stuff, but I'm grateful that you've been looking out for my safety. So, so thank you, Alyssa. I trust that things will make more sense to you in time, dear. She could only give you a gentle smile as you both resumed eating in silence. You made sure to thank her for the dinner afterwards before heading back to your room for the time being. Yeesh. Kind of a lot to drop on your plate at once. You're still restless, even though it was already late in the, late in the night. Your mind was still an entangled mess, unsure what to make of the conversation you had at dinner. Eventually, you let the drowsiness, you let the drowsiness take over, when you could no longer linger on the heavy topic anymore. Yep, best, but just, best to just sleep on it. Don't think about it, just sleep on it. <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> doggy. It's a doggy. Oh, hi, doggy. Oh, hi, Mark. You wake the next morning to sound of weird dogs barking outside. Alyssa's guests must have arrived early. Must be pretty large dogs by the sound of it. You rolled out of bed, cleaning yourself up to at least make a good impression on this visitor. Oh! That's a beefy boy! Ha <laughs> ha! Good to see you doing. Good to see you still doing well, ma'am. Likewise, I'm happy to see you arrive this early. You could see Alyssa's greeting the new guest at the doorstep. He was a rather muscular wolf, the uh, husky, the uh, Malamute. You weren't sure what exactly he was, but you can't deny that he was quite attractive. Timidly, you approached him as he began to notice you. Ho! Oh, and this is ah, uh, quite an opportune time to get acquainted. Max, this is Cassian. Cassian, this is Max. Uh, hi, Max. Wait, isn't that... I'm loaning them to him for the time being. I've barely had the chance to wash his clothes today. Oh, right. <clears throat> Hello, Cassian. The canine forced a smile at you, but you could tell he still looked quite taken aback for some reason. Hmm, I believe you arrived just in time for breakfast, Max. Come. Ah, right away, ma'am. You took a plate of food as per usual and sat across the dining table. Alyssa's prepared a new dish this time around, but you were too distracted by the new guest to really pay attention to it. He'd already left what seemed like his armor by the coat rack and slipped into a more casual shirt. Judging by the scar on his face and his well-toned body, the canine must be quite a seasoned warrior, or at least someone that has been through a lot. You couldn't keep your eyes off him through the entire meal. Maybe you were just that curious. You also had many questions, but never really found the right time to strike up a conversation with him. He seemed to be chatting away quite cheerfully with Alyssa, not once really paying attention to you. They must have quite the history with each other. Hmm. After breakfast, Alyssa tasked you and Max with the usual chores along with any leftover tasks from yesterday. I'm guessing it's the least you guys can do for a pangolin for cooking you delicious food. Despite passing by each other a lot, Max didn't seem to be too interested in speaking to you. Maybe he's just as distracted by his own work, but you couldn't help quit feeling quite bad about it. Before you knew it, Alyssa was calling you both over for lunch break to which you promptly joined her by the porch. Max, on the other hand, was still tending to those beast creatures in the stable. Judging by what you heard earlier in the morning, you expected really big feral dogs, but instead they looked nothing like that. In all honesty, you weren't even sure what they looked like based on the animals you've seen back in your world. You had even more questions both about Max and those creatures, and they, but they looked so fearsome that you wouldn't, dare take a, you wouldn't dare be taking a closer look, nor did you want to ask him or Alyssa about it. After lunch, Max informed Alyssa that he'd head into the forest to do some hunting and foraging. You thought of asking to join, but seeing how he insisted on going alone despite Alyssa's disapproval, you decided not to. Maybe he was quite the lone wolf. That's pretty. You spent the rest of the afternoon helping Alyssa with chores until it was dinner time and Max returned with the bounties of his trip. You headed back to the dining room after washing up. You could smell the delicious stew wafting from the large cauldron in the kitchen. Alyssa probably preferred something quite unique, like, like so, to welcome Max. You couldn't help but chuckle a little as well. While Alyssa wasn't a witch, you thought her using a cauldron to make stew was quite fitting. You helped yourself to the delicious meal, which was quite satisfying after a day's work. And yet, something still bothered you. You couldn't help but feeling left out seeing Max and Alyssa chatting away again, albeit not as lively as they were in the morning. 
You decided to finish dinner early and excuse yourself back to your room. Max seemed to give you a weird look as you left. You'd be lying to yourself if being ignored wasn't all it wasn't at all frustrating, even if from a complete stranger. With a sigh, you decided to call it a day early, already too exhausted to ponder about this matter. Hmm. Yeah, I thought those two would actually talk more to each other, but I guess not. Hmm. One doesn't seem to want much to do with the other, that's for sure. Alright. It's been two days since Alyssa's guest arrived, and the days seem to have slowly gone by like a routine. Breakfast, chores, lunch, more chores, or another foraging trip for Alyssa, dinner, bedtime. To think that just a few days ago we were still panicking left and right about whether or not you could live in this world. And yet here I am. In all honesty, I could get used to this. It's not so bad, actually. If nothing else, this was a healthier lifestyle for you. Much healthier than constantly hunching over a desk staring at electronic devices all day. Oh, God, I feel so fucking called out. Well, I'm not hunched. I'm actually sitting back in my very... Well, it's my very decent chair. My chair is decent, that's what I'll say. <laughs> I have to put some blankets and pillows on it to be fully comfortable. I also began to worry less about how things were back home, or trying to figure out how to get back. Though the latter was more so from conversation you had with Alyssa the other day. Hmm? Cassian? Uh, eh? Are you alright, dear? You've been staring at your soup for a while now. Is there something wrong with it? Oh, no, 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 no not at all. It's just... He looked around to make sure the canine was not there. Yes. Max, right? He, uh... He hasn't really spoken to me since he got here. And you said he would be the one to make to take me to the city, right? But so far, it looks like he's not very interested in that. M maybe in his eyes there's just nothing special about me. Maybe I'm not worthy enough to come to the city. I... Hush, Cassian. Oh, so, sorry, did I, did I say too much? Not at all. Hmm, well, I... I see how it is. Worry not, dear. He felt her hand softly caressing your head, which helped, you, which helped calm you down quite a lot. I'll have a talk with him later. Th thank you, ma'am, you said, feeling your tail flicking left and right unc uncontrollably. It stayed that way even long after you finished dinner and helped Alyssa cleaning the dishes. You also decided to hit the sack early that evening. Hmm. Something's gonna happen. I think something's gonna happen. How this usually goes. You wake later that night, feeling quite thirsty and wanting to pee at the same time. After taking care of your business, you went down to the kitchen for some water when you heard some muffled chatter coming from a nearby room. It was one of the vacant guest rooms, probably the one Max was staying in. I mean no offense, man, but you can't just take any stray kid in the forest and crown him the next hero. It just doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. He felt quite uneasy hearing that from Max, but you were awfully curious. The door to his room was left ajar, so you decided to take a peek. I know he mightn't be a shining example of heroism, nor does he look the part, but the Dark King has marked him the hero of prophecy. That alone cannot be pure coincidence. And you would ask of me to take a in a liability that could jeopardize the sanctity of Crystal Coast and the well-being of her people. I understand your righteous pursuit, ma'am, but clearly the pain you endured has blinded you. Max! Have you any faith in me? Uh, of course I do, Le I do not go under that name anymore. And yet, you still have the same faith in my judgment, do you not? I do, ma'am. Then please, take him to the academy. Keep him safe. Train him to be one of your warriors, if you must. He must... He may not be the hero of prophecy. He may yet be the hero of prophecy. Even were he not, it would not rest well in my mind were he to come to harm. That's a tall order. But that kid seems to mean a great deal to you. Very well. I'll take him back with me to the gallum to the Galantier. It's going to take a lot of favors to get him enrolled without getting questioned. I believe my name still carries weight among inner, their inner circles. If you tell them of my predictions, they should make accommodations for him. As you say, Lady Spring. Lady what now? Ah, I had a feeling she was important. D damn it! You cursed at yourself silently as you barely covered your mouth in time. You felt chills, felt chills down your spine as Max seemed to be looking directly at you, though he didn't seem to say anything. Is something the matter, Max? Oh, it's nothing, ma'am. Just wanted to mull it over for a bit. Hmm. Interesting that he didn't say anything. Hmm. Wow, that was a strange dream, all right. You chuckled at yourself nervously, still unsure what to make of what you overheard last night. After having breakfast, Alyssa told you that there weren't really any urgent tasks or chores for the time being, so you decided to head outside the house for a bit. Your eyes were wandering when you noticed something out of the ordinary. On the right side of a homestead, you could see Max setting up some sort of a makeshift training range, though it looked more fitted for bows or guns, if guns even existed in this world. 
After setting up a target dummy, Max put some distance in between before pulling out his weapon, which from afar looked like some kind of crossbow. Though it was almost as big as those sniper rifle guns you remember seeing in movies or video games. You weren't sure how he was doing it, but after charging up the crossbow, he pulled the trigger and delivered two consecutive shots towards the training dummy. You could barely hear the arrows flying through the air when you saw the first one nail the dummy in the head, dead in the head, while the second one grazed past its head and landed on the, fa on the fence behind the post. Whoa, talk about skilled! Hey, Cassian, right? Don't be a stranger. Come. Uh, okay. You hesitantly approached as the canine gestured towards himself. You, uh, you expected no less, but the sudden change in attitude was still jarring to witness. H hey! Hey, how you holding up? I'm alright. So, um, why didn't you speak to me first the other days? Ah, that. Well, I suppose I do owe you an apology for giving you the cold shoulder like so. Normally it wouldn't take much for me to put two and two together, but... Since you're not from this land, I presume you aren't aware of you aren't aware of the situation here either. H yeah, I'm afraid not. Like just this alone is already a lot to take in for me. You gestured at yourself when the canine had a weird look on his face. Huh? So you're saying you could take in a lot more if done differently? What? Ah, never mind then. Forget what I said. Uh, okay, so um. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Well. It's a long story, quite complicated even. Perhaps in time I will tell you more about it in detail. For the time being, you just need to know that there is an ongoing war against that same king we both knew of, know of. And it's a war that's being waged on many fronts. Now even the terrains aren't the only thing that's treacherous. It's getting harder to trust people in the same land, let alone outsiders such as you. That said, since Alyssa seems to trust you that much, I'm willing to make an exception. I trust that you won't ever betray that trust. I wouldn't want something like that happening to her. Yeah, well, she was the one to save me and looked after me for my own safety and well-being so far. I, I, don't, I don't think that I could happen, right? Perhaps not. Y yeah. You train here often? Hmm. Actually, no. Not here specifically. I just happened to have some free time to kill this morning. It's always good to put some practice in often. Keeping your skills sharp is quite important. Not just in my line of work, I believe. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, so... Can you show me some of your moves? Show me your moves! Oh, are you sure about that, Cassian? Unless you just want me to put on a show, becoming a fighter is not for everyone, you know. You're right, but if this land is in peril, like Alyssa said, then it's best that I learn how to fight to defend myself, right? Hmm, that's a good point. Perhaps I could show you some basic stuff or two. But first, I want to know what that badge means. It's like an order he's a part of. Before you knew it, Max grabbed you what looked like wooden swords from the nearby table and tossed one to you. Instinctively, you reached out for the sword handle just in time for you to grab it firmly. I bet still fumbling a little. Nice. Thanks. We're using swords? I thought you used that. Well, yeah. I might be a ranger myself, but all fighters receive basic training in fencing. Ooh. Thus, on guard. The canine assumed the same pose you seem, you've seen musketeers or similar characters would take, then delivered a swing towards you. You awkwardly held the sword up, trying to parry the hit, only to have your sword swatted away from your hand. Ow! You alright, Cassian? Here, I got you. Y yeah, I'm alright. Just stung a little is all. You said, rubbing your hand a bit as Max picked up the sword for you. Now, try hitting me as hard as you can. Uh, are you sure? Yep, don't worry, I can take it. Just wanted to gauge your strength regardless. Max chuckled as he assumed a defensive stance himself, which looked much sturdier than what you, than what you attempted. You aren't really sure how to grip a sword. The closest thing you ever did was trying to whack something with a plastic tube. So you just held the sword with one hand and swung it up and down against Max, who stared at you in confusion as the sword thunked harmlessly. Whoa, now, that's not a hit, Cassian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Ah, I see how it is. Well, that's enough having fun. Huh? W what do you mean? Well, fencing techniques are mostly useful in duels. But would everybody be dueling each other respectfully in a war? No, n right? Yeah. People tend not to follow those rules, especially with the likes of the evil king himself. Right. So, I can show you a basic version of how it can go out in the field. Watch closely. And he beats the shit out of you. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! What? Okay, so... Oh! Oh! Five health. Oh my god, this is cool! It's a fight system? What? This game is a battle system? Oh my god, this is so fucking cool! Uh, run... I don't, what is that? 
Okay, that's fight, magic, uh, block. Um, he probably wants us to attack, so... I don't think I have magic. Uh, okay. Use on who? Max. Okay, wow, that's so cool. Well, what are you waiting for? Hit me. Dave unleashes, Dave unleashes a flurry of blows. Max takes one damage. What do you do? Um, magic. Which skill? Tackle. A full body tackle that deals 2 HP of physical damage. Oh, okay. Use it on Max. Good try. Pay close attention to your enemy's movement and the amount of damage you're doing to each other. Dave uses tackle. Max takes 2 damage. What do you do? Uh... Also pay attention to what skills or items they might be using, so you can know what to expect. Also pay- okay. Dave took a defensive stance. Dave is guarding. Huh. Alright. Uh... If you think you've been off more than you can chew, fleeing might be a good option. Hey, don't run off just yet. Dave unleashes a fury of blow blows. If you think- Max sidestep from the attack. What do you do? Uh... Tackle. Max. Well, that's all there is to it. Well done. You won. It was a fun experience. That was fucking cool! It was already lunchtime before you knew it. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Man, guys, that was cool! Oh my god! It's got a battle system! Holy shit, this is an actual RPG! A visual novel RPG! Oh my god, I love it! Alright, anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!